Hey guys, in this video I want to show how to make a setup uh, to transfer uh, animation mocap data from iPySoft uh, Mocap Studio onto uh, Motion Builder to do some uh, cleanup of the animation and then eventually transfer it onto uh, Unreal Engine. Um, so to begin off, I uh, start off by exporting um, the SK Mannequin uh, character, so I can uh, use that inside um, iPySoft and Motion Builder. Um, so to begin with, I will start off by opening up my um, Mannequin folder with the character, and inside here we have the skeleton. Uh, so I'm going to export that, and I'm going to dump that in a folder here. Um, so the thing about uh, the character, if I uh, open up um, iPy uh, Studio. I will just uh, locate my um, video files. Uh, where do I put them? Um, so let's take this one. Here it is. Okay, so if I just um, set the character to our SK mannequin I just uh, exported. Uh, he's gonna come in like lying down and scaled up completely off like we can see here. Um, so we need to do something uh, with this uh, before we can uh, proceed. Um, so what I uh, found to work uh, pretty okay um, is to open up uh, Maya um, and um, I'm just gonna bring that over here. You can use Blender if you are more familiar with that, but uh, I'm not, so I'm gonna use Maya for this. Um, so open up your mannequin here, and inside here we can see we have uh, the root and we have. Um, this is the mesh itself, and uh, I think it's just uh, uh, the skin cluster. Yeah. Um, so to begin off, I uh, I'm gonna uh, select the pelvis and just control click the SK mannequin node up here and press um, P um, P yes. Um, I'm not hitting the right. Here, here we go. Um, so thereby, I'm uh, parenting the pelvis to this here. So I'm also going to select uh, the root and uh, hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of that. So uh, once that's done, I'm going to export all and call this my SK mannequin uh, iPi soft. Um, so if I, um, I'm just going to open up this file again, um, or maybe just select a different character. So let's select this one. So as you can see now, uh, the character uh, shows up inside the scene uh, in a more uh, reasonable um, scale. Um, so all I need to do now is just to map up all the joints here. So I have a profile for that already, um, so I'm not going to bother by doing that. Uh, so basically you just map all this, these up by selecting what is what and then saving this as a profile uh, so you don't have to do that all over again. Uh, so this is the animation with the character and it doesn't have any root uh, but it's uh, going to follow that animation that I'm showing here. Okay, so uh, yeah, well the, the character here is not uh, having animations on the hands obviously because iPySoft doesn't um, catch um, hand movements. So that's something I, I'm gonna animate inside uh, Motion Builder because I'm more familiar with that. Um, so um, once we have that in place I'm gonna open up Motion Builder. Um, just gonna do that here. And 
what we want to do here is actually to uh, because um, Unreal Engine runs with a C axis up and that is actually what we saw when we brought it inside the um, iPySoft uh, mocap studio uh, that the character was uh, was lying down and that's because the C axis uh, is the up axis and I believe the Y axis is up here uh, inside I don't know if we can see that yeah so the green arrow is to see uh, the Y axis so this is uh, the up axis that's why it's lying down when we get it in here um, so in order to preserve the character rotation when we want to get it back inside uh, Unreal Engine um, we're gonna have to. We can either do do that, that trick I showed in uh, in two of the pre previous videos I posted. Um, but I think um, uh, a better way to do this, uh, which was uh, suggested to me by uh, Mo from uh, MoCabby, um, is to actually uh, use retargeting for this inside Motion Builder. So I'm gonna open up. Uh, I'm gonna show how how to set this up here gonna open up um, first the SK mannequin so this is just a raw um, skeleton uh, coming from Unreal Engine um, so I select start off by selecting actually let me just do that again um, because I might just as well do something else uh, so we do that again and when we do that we can apply a namespace we can do that afterwards also but I'm just gonna do it here uh, so let's call this UE4. Um, so what that does is to append a UE4 in front of everything here, so that uh, Motion Builder can have two versions of the same skeleton with the same names and so on, without uh, getting name conflicts. Um, <clears throat> uh, since this skeleton is what I'm gonna eventually be using, and I'm will end up with a maybe two uh, um, quite similar uh, meshes I like to uh, make a little color change to it so that I visually can tell them apart so I'm gonna double click this um, these are the two materials found, found under SK mannequin here I'm just gonna turn that up like this so this is not really needed but I like to do that um, so uh, I also need to hide this, uh, I'd like to hide this, so I uh, right clicked uh, the mesh here and create a group and uh, then I'm going to hide that one, also I think I'm going to rename this, so let's call this the SK Mannequin uh, Mesh and you can actually um, go into your group here if you want to uh, and also add a namespace, that same namespace space here so you can uh, kind of um, see just by looking at these what they uh, represent so that's a good thing to do um, okay so the next thing uh, I'm going to do is to uh, um, characterize the skeleton here uh, so uh, click uh, the, the hip or whatever just any joint really and click skeleton and define so uh, just uh, like we've done several times before, uh, we need to, to map up uh, all these joints, um, which I won't be doing. I'm just going to show how it's done. Just, so I'm just um, double clicking these and then uh, clicking uh, the corresponding joint here. So once you have done that, uh, you will end up with uh, something uh, looking almost green. Uh, by almost, I mean, um, because a few of them will uh, eventually turn um, yellow. So I've done this um, this uh, same setup here before, and once you've done that, you can save the skeleton definition just like you did in um, yeah, um, iPad uh, mocap studio. The thing in Motion Blur is that uh, because the IK uh, hand L and the IK foot and the root um, they have a name looking very similar uh, this matching up here is gonna uh, mess up so I actually need to go ahead and fix uh, these three um, 
manually after loading up that profile. So uh, double click the left hand here and select the hand on. So it's going to say uh, it's already assigned. Do you want to reassign it? And do you also reassign it for the right hand? So it's going to fix both of them. Um, so we need to do the same for the, uh, the leg. Uh, so I'm going to expand this one and find the foot. So double click this one and select the, the foot. So we have the hand and we have the foot and uh, we also need to fix the root here. Right. So that's in, uh, in place now. So uh, this warning says that it's not parallel to the x-axis. Uh, so this one. So we need to put it in a, uh, in a t-post. So uh, click this uh, scene and press Ctrl uh, F on your keyboard uh, to get to the front of view. And you want to switch, uh, make sure that you are in local space uh, and then click the rotate and it actually switched. So make sure you have local here. And I use a snap rotation here for, uh, of uh, 2.5. So if you don't have this, you can go into your preferences and add this in here in the rotation snap angle. Um, but I already have it. So the trick here is to get the uh, get him into a t-pose and um, I don't really know I, did, I just do this by uh, basically just watching um, these uh, gimbals here um, see if I can line this up uh, like, like so and I'm gonna watch this one out here and see when it turns, uh, turns green because then I know I, I've done a, a, a good job. So let's see. Um, all right, so that's it. I could actually also go to the uh, press control uh, T to go to the top view and see if everything is lining up. So maybe I wanted to straighten out this one. I'm not really sure I, I, I want that. Actually, I don't think I, I'm going to do that. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to do the same here for the right hand. So I'm just going to compare these two. It looks like it needs to go a little bit up here. And I remember that I needed to turn this forward just a little bit. Yep. And, um, oops. All right, so Motion Builder says it's okay with this, and let's press Control T to check uh, the top view, so just to see if it's sort of uh, the same, and it looks pretty okay to me. Just come up one second. Okay, um, so um, once we have the uh, the character in a, in a T pose, we can. Uh, Lock the character and say biped, and that's going to create um, in the scene in the navigator here. Uh, it's going to create a character uh, which is currently called character. So I'm just going to rename this because I'm going to get another character in here in, in a while. So I'll call this SK uh, Mannequin uh, Character and Um, I'm gonna add this UE4 namespace here as well. Right. Um, so while I'm in here, I might as well just uh, create a control break for this. So um, with this double, uh, when you double click this one, uh, switch to character definition and click uh, create, and select FK and IK. So it's gonna create this um, control break. Um, right. Um, so the next thing we need to do is to bring in the, the other character um, or the other skeleton. Uh, so we um, we just hit merge and uh, select this SK mannequin iPie soft. 
uh, skeleton and I'm not gonna bother by adding a namespace to this because I'm just gonna uh, once I have uh, my animation imported onto this one I'm just gonna delete it anyway so um, yeah not gonna bother about, with that it's gonna be called SK mannequin so that's why it's nice to have this uh, namespace in here otherwise it would uh, collide with the um, with the existing uh, skeleton definition Okay, so uh, click the gray version here and create a group for that as well and uh, uncheck that on the groups so you, you can hide that away and up here on the UE4 mannequin character I want to select none um, and actually before I do that I, um, I just go ahead and deactivate that and I'll uh, Select none up here. Okay, so click your SK mannequin. So this is the um, make sure that this is the pelvis for uh, the SK mannequin and not the UE4 mannequin, uh, and then create a new skeleton for this one. Uh, so we basically want to do the same as we just did. So uh, um, help you save your settings because um, or your skeleton uh, definition uh, because you're going to need it again and because this one uh, doesn't have these IK uh, joints you can see that the hand L and foot here is um, matched up correctly and we don't have a reference uh, or root bone for this one so we're not going to bother with this one Right, so <clears throat> uh, let's switch to the front of you and make sure you're on local again and just uh, whoops, put him in the T pose. So uh, this is luckily uh, something you just need to do one time uh, for this because it, uh, it should get a little bit tedious uh, to do several times. Um, Oops. So that's uh, the left hand. It's just, it's okay. And uh, the good thing about doing this a few times is that you get get uh, some practice in working with this. So it's not that bad actually. Um, right. So it looks like this is uh, pretty. Uh, Okay, I'm going to check the top view and just see if this is looking uh, identical to each other. So uh, click um, characterize, lock. Um, so this creates uh, another character. And, and just with the other one, I'm not going to bother renaming this one because I'm going to get rid of it uh, eventually when I start using uh, the animations. Um, so uh, last thing we need to do is go to the UE4 mannequin character here. And right now it's being driven, driven by the skeleton uh, um, because it is not active. So uh, if I activate this, it's going to be driven by the control rig. But we don't want uh, that. We want it to be driven by the um, another character, and actually, uh, we want it to be driven by the character. So that character down here is referencing or uh, referring to the uh, sorry. Um, so yeah, this one, um, the iPy uh, character, if you want. Um, actually, for clarity, let's just rename this. Uh, it's not gonna matter anyway. So let's call this iPy character. So it's clear that um, this is the one that we're uh, having selected here. Uh, and then activate this. <clears throat> okay, so that means that uh, whenever we get animation in on this uh, the skeleton, it's gonna be uh, driving the UE4 uh, control rig. Okay. So uh, what you want to do at this point, and you may have want to have uh, want to be doing this uh, a little bit earlier actually, but uh, let's just go ahead and save this, and let's call this SK um, IPI Soft to a motion bar to a UE4, so you can see that 
let's just call it this. <clears throat> okay, um, so that means that you now have a template. Um, I don't want to say that. Um, so you have a template that you can just use. Um, so the idea is really to have um, to do as little uh, adjustments uh, as possible when you need to bring it in an animation. So I'm just uh, showing this because yeah. it's nice to have uh, available. So the idea is uh, once I have um, an animation like this one, uh, which I uh, want to export, and I selected my SK Mannequin I, uh, I soft here. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to export this just as, as it is. Um, so let's, um, let's for now just throw it in the same folder um, and hit export. So now it's exported. Um, is it an FBX format? Nope. Uh, I'm going to select FBX. <clears throat> I don't think it really matters, but um, anyway. Um, so the process here from, from here on is to just open up your IPy Motion Builder UE4 um, file. Uh, and then you can motion file import. And Um, let's take this one <clears throat> and make sure to select merge and import. So it's going to say only a few of these uh, 61 out of uh, 62 can be merged, but that's okay. And it's going to put him here. Um, so once we uh, start playing this, we can see that our golden guy, uh, which is uh, actually the UE4 mannequin uh, skeleton, is going to um, be moving. So this is actually the, um, the place that we want to have this, because uh, this is uh, at the point where we can actually uh, start working with this. So what I uh, prefer to do at this point is to take um, my character, my UE4 mannequin character, and plot to control rig. So that's gonna carry all the animation from the um, from that uh, SK mannequin skeleton. It's gonna carry that onto the control rig, and then um, select the SK mannequin here from the scene, and select branches, and select delete, and say okay, and yes. And delete the character and say yes and yes and what that does is to get rid of the um, both the skeleton uh, the ipi skeleton and um, the control the character and all that stuff um, it's not going to get rid of the group by the way i should have removed that uh, but i still have the all the animation intact here so uh, once i'm uh, ready to export this to unreal engine I can just hit plot and plot this to my skeleton. Um, so once I have that, uh, I can uh, motion file export this. Um, so let's just for the sake of this video, um, do that. Um, let's call this uh, test. Um, <clears throat> so of course, I would uh, do a lot of cleaning up on this first before I do uh, uh, an actual export and probably want to isolate some of the moves. Uh, but let's um, just try and uh, import this. So I think I can save this on my desktop. Okay, so uh, one other thing I didn't mention to begin with is that um, if you work with uh, uh, third person example map uh, and the uh, free animation starter packs you'll know that the <clears throat> these two animation uh, sets they are not compatible uh, because the animations coming with the third person example uh, is not uh, is having a root joint which is a rotated uh, minus 90 degrees uh, around the x-axis so that's actually going to create a little dip uh, in the animation when you blend in between the free animation starter pack and the third person animations. 
Um, this issue was, however, fixed in uh, UE 4.11, so uh, from there on it's not going to be an issue. But that sure took quite a while for them to fix, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, as mentioned, this is something you want to uh, pay uh, very close attention to when you um, uh, bring in the animation. So you want to make sure that you have a C axis, which is a blue purplish uh, arrow. And you want that to point upwards and you want the green, which is the Y axis, to point forward. Uh, relative to your character. Um, so uh, I'm actually just talking because this is going to take a little while. I just realized that I uh, actually imported 2200 frames uh, on video, which might uh, be a little bit overkill. Um, so um, yeah, this was a uh, a lecture. I would uh, ask the, the the audience if they had any good stories, uh, having a good day. <laughs> but uh, since it's just me and I uh, in front of my computer, uh, doesn't really work that way. So uh, yeah, I uh, could try and post the video. I, uh, by the way, I got a, a question about what. Um, um, screen uh, capture software I use and actually using uh, o uh, OBS so I have that here whoops and obviously Windows 10 what the f where did it go sometimes it does some weird stuff when I hit the, the border of the screen like that all right so uh, there you have it in the setting uh, setup that I use so uh, I have usually have this on the other screen so finally we have the animation so um, let's uh, pause this just for a moment and check the route here so the first visual uh, cue you're gonna have here is that uh, the IK um, joints is standing up so if they are not standing up then uh, if they are lying down on the floor then you are probably having a bad uh, root rotation. So if we zoom in here, we can see actually that it's uh, looking really, really good. It's uh, the green is pointing forward and the blue purplish one is pointing upwards. So uh, we are all good to go. So the only thing uh, missing from this setup here is really um, to make sure that the root is going to travel with you if you want to use root motion. Uh, but that's a completely different story, uh, but that can be done with a position constraint in Motion Builder. So uh, if you don't know how to set that up, uh, just let me know. I'm, I'm going to post a video on that because uh, that's actually something I will <coughs> I, I usually do and um, I will be needing to do. So this is, um, yeah, this is a complete um, process uh, the workflow from IPI soft to uh, Unreal Engine so uh, from here on I once I have this animation cleaned up I have a lot of uh, a few uh, jerks going on with the, the hands especially and they are not curling up uh, like they're grabbing anything so that's something I want to fix there but uh, besides that it seems to be pretty uh, acceptable I think um yeah so uh, yeah thank you uh for watching and um see you in the next bye bye